I'm Dr. Sunil Kumar S. Paki, Professor and Head Civil Engineering Department, Valjain Institute of Technology, Solapur. So in today's session, let us discuss about design example of RCCTB. Learning outcomes. At the end of this session, learners will be able to design RCCTB with reference to IS 456-2000 provisions. Let us see an example. A T-beam of slab floor has 125 thickness of slab forming a part of T-beam which are of 8 meter clear span. That is clear span of the beam is 8 meter. The end bearings are 450 mm thick. Spacing of T-beam is 3.5 meter. The live load on the floor is 3 kilo Newton per meter square. Design one of the intermediate beams use M20 concrete and FE405 steel. So the given things in the above example are the design of flange that is depth of flange is 125 mm, spacing of T beam is 3.5 meter, live load 3 kN per meter square, FCK that is the characteristic strength of concrete is 20 Newton per mm square, characteristic strength of steel is 415 Newton per mm square and clear span is 8 meter and end bearing width is 450 mm. So first of all we are supposed to assume effective depth of the beam based on control for deflection. So based on control for deflection the depth of the beam should vary between 1 12th of the span to 1 15th of the span. So now available span is 8 meter therefore 1 12th, 1 12th work out to be 667 and 1 15th work out to be 533. Let us the effective depth be 600 mm. Overall depth of the beam by considering 50 mm effective cover it will be 650 mm. So we have to assume the breadth of the beam. So breadth of the beam usually it is one half to one third of the effective depth. So let us assume one half works out to be 300, one third works out to be 200. So therefore let us assume BW that is width of rib as 250 mm. Effective span of the you we are supposed to calculate as per clause number 22.2a since it is simply supported beam. So it is given by clear span plus depth or center to center of bearing whichever is less. Now out of these two values lesser is 8.45 therefore this is the effective span of the beam. Flange width of the flange width of T beam as per IS 456-2000 can you guess what are, what is the value you already studied this particular uh, T beam design? So can you just guess which is, what is the correct option of this? Option B, BF L naught by six plus BW plus six DF. That is the right option. D equal. Next is you are supposed to find out flange width as per clause number 23.1.2 that is BF is equal to L0 by 6 plus BW plus 6 DF. Since it is simply supported beam, L0 is actually the distance between two points of zero bending moment. So therefore, for simply supported zero bending moment is at support, therefore L0 is equal to 8.45. So BF will work out to be 2408 mm or Another thing we should check the value of BF is 0 0.5 L1 plus L2 plus BW. So that is center to center distance between the adjacent slabs 3.5 meter. So the minimum of A and B is to be taken as BF. The cross section of the beam to be designed as shown in figure B, uh, figure 2 here below. So here you will find so this is the effective width of flange, 125 is depth of flange and then this is 250 is width of rip. So load per meter of beam, load from slab we have to take first. So self weight, it is thickness into the density, 25 kN per cubic meter, it was sort of 3.125. The next weight of floor finish, it is assumed 0.6 kN per meter square. Live load, it is given 3 kilo Newton per meter square. Total load on the floor slab is 6.725 addition of all above is kilo Newton per meter square. Since the slab 
width is 3.5 meter so load on the beam from slab is equal to 23.577 kilo newton per meter next is self weight of rib so flange is already considered therefore balance uh, depth of beam is to be considered therefore width is 250 uh, depth is 650 minus 125 and self weight of the rib works out to be 3.28 kilo newton per meter so weight of plaster to the rib is also assumed it is 0.5 kilo newton per meter and total load on the beam it is addition of all above a b c d so we get factor factor total load as 40.95 kilo newton per meter next we have to determine design moment mu is equal to w into l square upon 8 so it is 365.5 kilo newton meter then we have to find out design shear force that is w into l divided by 2 that is 173.173 kilonewton. So design of longitudinal bars. Now we have to find out what is the longitudinal reinforcement to provide. So X limit as per Fe4 and 5, it is 0.48D. It was thought to be 288 mm. So neglecting contribution of rib, assuming uniform compression in the flange, MU limit is given by 0.446 FCK BFDF into 1 minus 0.5 UDF. So this was thought to be 1443.145 to 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm. Therefore, MU is less than MU limit. It can be designed as singly reinforced section, assuming neutral axis to coincide with the flange, taking XU is equal to DF, that is equal to 125 mm. MU dash is equal to 0.36 FCK BFDF into 1 minus 0.42 DF. So that was sort to of be 1186.542 into 10 to the power of 6 Newton mm. Thus, MU observed to be it is less than MU dash. That indicates that the depth of neutral axis is within the flange. So therefore, equating MU with 0.87 FY ASTD into 1 minus EST FY BDFCK. So this is MU as per G.1.1.1B. 1 so we will get area of steel 1730 mm square that is provide 620 mm bars. So now we have to design that is flexural design is over. Now we have to design it for shear and we have to check it for deflection. So in design for shear we should first calculate tau v that is nominal shear stress that is 1.153 newton per mm square. Then we should find out percentage steel so that is 1.257 percent. So tau c we should find it from table number 19 and tau c max again table number 20 of is456 so shear reinforcement is to be designed because vus is equal to vu minus tau c bd so that was thought to be 72500 newton now using two legged diam two legged 8 mm diameter fe415 steel vertical stirrup spacing of stirrup is given by vus is equal to 0.87 fy svd divided by sv sv was thought to be 300 point 39 mm but maximum spacing as per is is 0.75 d or 300 mm whichever is less therefore provide 8 mm two legged 8 mm stirrups with uh, 300 mm center to center then check for deflection as it is a simply supported beam l by d is 20 as per class number 23.2 of is456 so percent steel is 1.257 ast required AST provided both are known 17301 and 1885. So FS is, is worth out to be 220.9 and modification factor F1 is 1 uh, from graph figure number 4 and compression steel F2 will be 1 and the other factor F3 it works out to be 0 0.8. Then L by D maximum F1, F2, F3 into basic value that is uh, it is less than 14. So so the it is less than maximum L by D provided. So this is the reinforcement sketch showing the top hanger bars 12 mm to 10 mm tor and the bottom bars uh, main reinforcement six bars are there therefore we have provided in two layers and this is the cross section and you this is an assignment for you you please note down the assignment for further calculation. So it is having the flange thickness is now 1 to 130 and 9 meter clear span 
and the bearing 600 mm 4 kN per meter square load and 20 m20 and m415 uh, steel is used and these are references used for this particular display thank you